Hello and welcome to another StarCraft 2 co-op guide. Today we'll be taking a look at Artanis Solos on Temple of the Past. This guide was requested by Primal Hive member Kimmo Pronger. Artanis lovers can give him a shout out in the comments below. Hive and Primal Hive members can request challenges as well as short or long guides. If you would like to support me, become a member with the link in the description below. Now let's get on with the show. Should you use P1 or P3? P1 has stronger sustained AoE, making it better versus alien incubation walking infested zerglings and marines. It's not very good versus air because dragoons are more expensive but don't benefit from P1. P3 is more durable thanks to unbound fanatics. It is also better against more comps compared to P1. In general, P3 is better, but for some mutations, P1 is needed. And that's the focus of our lesson today. I'll be discussing P1 versus classic infantry pattern A. This is the easiest comp for P1 to fight, and for some mutations, it's still kinda difficult. If you want to increase the difficulty a bit, you can try Shadow Disruption or Invasionary Swarm. There are seven stages to Temple of the Past. Since the focus is Pattern A, we'll look at its stages in more detail. Pattern A is considered easier than Pattern B because you don't have to go out to clear an extra Thrasher and you don't have to fight an extra Hybrid Wave. The first stage is the beginning up until the first Thrasher. The second stage is the Side Waves. The third stage is the Southwest again up until the second Thrasher. The fourth stage is the Northeast Waves, two drops, and the third Thrasher. The fifth stage is the Double Hybrid Wave then the drop pods, and lastly the final waves, including the second double hybrid wave. These are the timings of the waves in stage 1. Note that these are the times that the enemies spawn, not when they start moving or reach the main area. In general, they will meet up near the final thrasher spot about 10 to 15 seconds after they spawn. They will reach the ramp about 40 to 50 seconds after they spawn. Use orbital strike on the first wave. Depending on the mutators, you may need more than one. Use Solar on the second wave, use Shield Overcharge on the hybrid wave. By that time, you should have enough stuff to fight the waves without top bar. Before we take a deeper dive into each stage, we need to look at the early game Eco. Units for P1 are more expensive, so Econ is even more important. Before making this guide, I didn't even know that I used 5 different openings on 5 different mutations with P1. I analyzed each of them to see which one produced the best results. Let's look at each one. I started with the same tech opening, 15 gate, 16 gas, 17 gas, then core, then zealot to break the rocks, then twilight, pylon at some point. After the twilight council, things diverged. For conflagration, I used orbital strike on the rocks once and twice on the waves to pick off all the brulings and stuff. I got my nexus up at 410. For all 5 runs, I was able to get Spin Lot, Storm, and High Templar Energy by the time the 6 minute Hybrid Wave reached my base. For Conflagration, I had 2 High Templar, 3 Zealots, and 1 Goon. I warped in 2 Zealots during the fight and used Shield Overcharge. By 715, there were 7 probes on Minerals and 3 on Gas. I chose 715 because that was usually the time that the Hybrid Wave was gone and I could check my macro. At 820, which is a bit after the Thrasher spawned, I had 62 supply, 413 minerals, 358 gas, 3 gates, no forge, and 3 pylons. I had 3 pylons because I wanted to build cannons on the sides to catch the trickles. For Temple of Rebirth, I wanted to save my orbital strikes for the enemies, so I opened with 2 zealots. That allowed me to get a nexus by 350. For the hybrid wave, I had a slightly smaller army, 2 high templars and 4 zealots. I used shield overcharge to make sure I would live through the fight. At 7.15, I had 3 more workers on gas compared to the first opening. My supply at 8.20 was about the same. I had a bit less gas, but I had a forge with plus 1 started. For inner power, I started with 1 zealot and then added another one after making the twilight council, which is at about 3 minutes. I started the natural nexus at around 4.20. I only used 1 orbital strike on the wave because I made a cannon to deal with trickles. My army for the hybrid wave was more or less the same, but my natural econ was terrible. I checked the run and realized that my nexus wasn't making probes for a total of over a minute, which could have been 4 more workers. As a result, my status at A20 was really bad compared to the others. For choices choices, I used 1 zealot and orbital strike twice. This allowed me to get the nexus up at 315. I only used 1 orbital strike on the wave because the enemies weren't stronger and didn't produce brulings. My army had 1 zealot more than the others. I also used shield overcharge, but I don't think it was necessary. My econ at 715 was really good because of the much earlier nexus. As a result, I had 71 supply at 820 with enough resources for 2 more units. 
Finally, for Kala to come back, I did the same thing that I did for Inner Power, but I also used an Orbital Strike. My Nexus was late because I needed to make a Zealot to finish off the wave. Strangely enough, my army was still decently large, and my Econ after the Hybrid Wave was also good. Perhaps this was because this was the most recent run, so I may have been better at constantly producing probes while teching. Overall, the choices choices opening of one Zealot and two Orbital Strikes on the rocks seems to be the best. For P1, energy isn't really that important, so dumping 50 energy on the rocks isn't a bad idea. Can Nexus Rocks work? If so, how do you make it work? If you don't know what Nexus Rocks is, check out my guide here. With P1, you don't want to open with Nexus Rocks because you need your High Templar ASAP. You don't have unbound fanatics like P3 to take care of the early waves reliably. You need to have the spin lot and first two High Templar upgrades before 640, so make sure that the Twilight Council and the Templar Archives are chrono. Don't make High Templars before the energy upgrade is done. I've done that before and it's insta-lose. Even though you want these upgrades ASAP, you shouldn't use Chrono Mastery just for that. The extra energy is good for breaking rocks. How do you manage to have a lot of units as Artanis P0, P1, P2 while also having tech structures built like Robo Forge, etc. as so many attack waves are coming every minute? Hotkey your nexuses and make sure there's always a probe in production. Look for the white dot. Once you have 19 or 20 probes on minerals in the main, rally both nexuses to the natural. This is so that you can continue pro production without worrying about oversaturation. By the way, you should probably have 4 workers in the bottom assimilator in the main and 4 in the top left assimilator in the natural. Before each attack wave, queue 2 probes unless you think you need more units. For the 6 minute hybrid wave, you'll need 2 high templars and 4 to 5 zealots, more if there's just die or avenger. Add 1 templar for the 645 wave and 1 for the 730 wave. Replace the zealots that died, if any. Remember the costs for these. If you have more minerals than that, make probes. Remember these times. Move forward at 8 minutes so the first thrasher doesn't attack the temple. Macro is a bit tight in the early game. Build assimilators before fighting the hybrid wave. After each wave, check the natural. Both gases should be saturated after the hybrid wave. After the next wave, count the number of probes you need until you get to 13 out of 15. Then just queue all of them at once. This way, you'll be fully saturated by the time the first thrasher goes down. Why aren't you subscribed? Good question. Go smash that like button right now. Back to the guide. As for tech structures, you should have three gates, a forge, and a robo. Start plus one weapons when you can and chrono the forge. Build around the temple, especially in the southwest and southeast. These sides get hit hardest by the late game waves. The drop waves also hit there, so if you're out of position, they'll at least hit your buildings and not the temple. Make at least one Archon to draw aggro. It will be stormed and healed, keeping your High Templar safe. Hotkey your Archons so you can also use them to cast Storm, since you'll only use the High Templar's Storm by default. When is it a good time to use your cooldowns? Does it depend on the Mutator? Orbital Strike isn't very good, so use it as often as you want on hybrids, tanks, and marine clumps before 8 minutes. After 8 minutes, they will have combat shields, so they'll have more than 50 HP. Shield overcharge usage will be mentioned later. Solar Bombardment will be used for specific waves. 5 minute wave, 10 minute hybrid wave, or the 1230 hybrid wave, the 18 minute hybrid wave, and the 2330 hybrid wave. Basically every hybrid wave except the first. Why the 5 minute wave and not the 6 minute hybrid wave? You need time for the High Templar upgrades. Using solar at 5 minutes also makes the 10 minute hybrid wave easier because you can use solar on one of the two waves. So you can see here, this is before the hybrid wave. So just use Heal Overcharge, storm the Zealots so that they get healed, and pull the High Templar back so that they don't get targeted. And even with Just Die, they can still survive long enough and the next wave here storm the entire wave three to four times make an archon so that you have enough energy for the next fight and then there's one more wave so around this time i want to push forward so that i can get ready to hit the temple and just storm the whole wave and then get stuff to attack at this point i might get a few goons sometimes i get goons sometimes i don't they deal more damage to armor, and since the Thrasher has just died and it's armored, I want to make sure that I can kill in time so that I get back. Stage 2 is the three double waves. 
This part is arguably the hardest part of the mission because you're still building up an army, but you have to split to fight the waves. With P3, you can use unbound fanatics, four on one side and one with the army to take care of these waves. But with P1, you don't have this option. If you choose to use solar here, use it on the southeast wave because there are two hybrids. If you want to save solar for the 1230 wave from the southwest, use shield overcharge when the hybrid arrive. At this point, you should be fully saturated so you can focus on the army. Split your army into two even groups and give each of them a hotkey. I give them one and two. Hopefully, you have an extra pylon in the southeast of the temple with some buildings as well. The northwest group fights at the ramp and the southeast group fights near the temple. This is important because this allows you to deal with each wave one at a time instead of both of them at the same time. While you are fighting the northwest wave, the southeast wave will just continue to walk up often to the allies empty natural giving you a bit of time. The main point is that you don't want to engage both waves at the same place on the map. So you don't want to engage both of them at the ramp or both of them at the temple. As mentioned earlier, use solar on the southeast wave because it has two hybrid. The two northwest waves at 10 and 11 minutes are tier four, so there will be tanks. If you're fighting shadow disruption, there will be dark Templar. Use orbital strike on them if you want. As for macro, Check your forge to make sure you're always getting upgrades. Eventually get 7 to 10 gateways total. Place them around the temples, so that way they will also help stall. In stage 2, I have to split my army, so the top one fights at the top of the ramp. And then here, it's a little bit towards the temple. And then go switch back. We are detecting. We shall cut. Get ready for the hybrid wave, so um, this time... I'm going to use solar on the bottom right, so I push forward first, solar, and kind of hold them in place, storm a little bit to stay alive, and then the other wave comes. Orbital strike on the tanks, because they're stronger, and then regroup. Now we arrive in stage 3. If you use solar for the hybrid wave, make sure to use it by 1310 so that it'll be ready for the important double hybrid wave. The last wave of this stage is tier 5, which means there will be ghosts that will try to nuke you. Set up an observer or cannons below the nexus, as seen in the left picture. Make a small group of goons to fight the thrasher. Micro them if you can. The rest of your army, which is mainly Archons, Zealots, and High Templar, will fight the waves. Use Shield Overcharge for the hybrid wave if you used Solar earlier, and research Dragoon range. You don't need shield regen because your main army does not consist of dragoons and thus will not be taking the brunt of the attacks. You still want the range against tanks and air hybrid. Make a few cannons in the northeast if you want to save gas. So here we do the same thing for the third wave in stage 2. And then after they're all dead, we group up to get ready for stage 3. The observer is for ghosts. And then there's a hit threat, hit squad for the thrasher. Sometimes you can use goons, sometimes you can just use zealots. I sometimes use goons, sometimes zealots. And the rest, they'll go this way. For this mutation, I didn't use the solar earlier, so I'll use it right now. I would say it's a bit late, but all right. And then here, storm, storm. And then use, so here, the dragoons now have attack speed bonus. And then we'll attack. Look back. This one I may have looked back for a little too long because now the Thrasher army is getting hit, but it's alright. So here all the guys are stormed. Added an observer to make sure the ghost is dead. And now we finish off the Thrasher and get ready for stage 4. Stage 4 is easy. Use shield overcharge when the second air hybrid comes, if necessary. If you want to save gas for Templar, make a bunch of cannons. Beware that hybrid nemesis often disables static defense structures. Start building a few cyber cores in the southeast for stalling. Build a cyber core near the temple in the northeast. This will stall drops later. After the first drop, split your army. A few Templar and Zealots stay behind while the rest go towards the Thrasher. In stage 4, you gather your whole army in the top right and prepare for the drop waves. The waves from the medevacs and the two drop waves. You can use orbital strike on the tanks and the air hybrid. And you can use shield overcharge to make sure that your guys stay alive. 
you should definitely use shield overcharge if you have like over 150 energy. And at this point, you split your army. Just need you don't even need that this many. Just have enough to storm these guys to death, and then the other guys should be here getting ready to fight the Thrasher. And at the bottom, in the southeast, you should start making the stall buildings. So once the cooldown is ready, make some cyber cores to stall. Stage 5 is just the first double hybrid wave. Use solar on the northwest wave because they arrive first, they stand still, and they are stronger than the southeast wave. Use your army that's already there to clean up whatever is left. The southeast hybrids sometimes split from the regular enemies. If they don't hit your stalling cores, they will walk towards the temple. Warp in some zealots to lure them while the rest of your army walks back from the northwest. Use shield overcharge once your whole army engages. After the fight, make 2-3 to three cyber cores in the southwest for stalling. So in stage 5, you just get ready. First thing you do is solar these guys while they're just standing there. And most of them should be dead. Continue storming, orbital striking the tanks and the hybrid that aren't dead yet. Then, get ready to fight the other side. So here, if they're not hitting the cyber cores, you can make some zealots and lure them away from the temple. Now that they're here, engage and then storm. Continue storming, just use orbital strike since it's pretty much free at this point, just free damage. To prepare for stage 6, move your army to the northeast. Fight off the wave and avoid standing where the enemies will drop. Move your army in a clockwise direction to clear the drops. Warp in some zealots and templar to storm the marines from the 20 minute wave. This is a small group that is separate from your main army, but you'll need it to take care of that wave, so you'll have to split for a short bit. The tanks will siege and hit the cyber cores from earlier, so just storm all the marines. You can finish them off later while you focus on the drops. Remember to move the new warp ins away from the spot where the enemies will drop. After cleaning up all the enemies, make some cyber cores in the northwest and southeast for stalling. Move your army to the southwest. Now we get to stage 6, the drops. So storm the drops, pull back. Note the drop pod positions, so stay away from those spots. Here you warp in a group of units, get ready to storm the bottom wave. So this one may require some multitasking, just stay away from the fire. So I'll even hiding on the bottom, replacing the cyber cores or adding more. And then there's one more that's random. So here's the last one, storm them, and that's it. The last stage is about stalling. Just like before, you'll use solar on the northwest hybrid wave. As long as the temple has more than 2000 HP, you should be fine. If everything has gone well so far, the temple should be well above 2800 HP. After you take care of the southwest wave, split your army. The southeast wave is stronger, so there should be more units there. Make a few cyber cores in the southwest for stalling. So basically, after you fight some area, after you leave there, make some cyber cores there to stall the subsequent waves. Focus on surviving, which means minerals should be used for cyber cores rather than zealots. Cores make tanks siege and unsiege, which wastes time. Put some cyber cores around the temple as well. Spend your gas on Templar for more firepower. When the hybrid wave from the northwest reaches the ramp, solar them. Use shield overcharge, then fight the hybrid in the southeast. For the last wave, do whatever you can to stall. Pull probes if you need to. Your camera should be around the temple, warping in high Templar to storm clumps of marines. If everything goes well, congratulations, you have survived. In stage 7, you want to stall, so start making lots of cyber cores everywhere. Deal with the bottom left wave first. So here they're coming up. Use feedback on the science vessels and storm the rest of the guys. And then afterwards, you'll split your army so you can warp in some new guys and also... Yeah, that, sometimes that's enough. This one, I just warp new guys. Here, you'll 
generally suffer a lot of losses. So you can't use Steel Overcharge just yet because the hybrid aren't here yet. And then here they're hitting the the Diver Course, that's fine actually. So now that the enemies have reached the ramp, solar and get rid of as many as possible. Orbital strikes are basically just extra chip damage. Basically want to get rid of all the small guys, and the big guys can just hit buildings. Because there's just die, they probably won't go down. So we're just getting rid of as many as possible. Camera is focused on the temple area, so we'll get the mini-map, but then cameras on the temple, make sure, making sure they don't hit the temple. Or drill strike whatever I can, and then just like storm whatever guys, whatever I can. Just stall, pray that you don't lose. This guide is mainly focused on P1, but if you want to play P3, great! There are a few differences, but the overall game plan will still be the same for Pattern A. Open with Nexus Rocks. Use Unbound Fanatics on the first wave and rocks. Use Delayed Unbound Fanatics on the next two waves, then Solar the Hybrid. Then use Delayed UF again for the last two waves before the Thrasher. Alternatively, you can use Solar on the second wave, then Delayed UF on the Hybrid wave and the one after that. Four on the hybrid and one on the next one, backing it up with the army. So you use the unbound fanatics to tank. If the enemies aren't strong, you can do three and then two. Then use shield overcharge for the last wave before the thrasher. You don't want to use delay unbound fanatics for three waves because then your macro will fall behind. For stage two, use delayed unbound fanatics again. The unbound fanatics tank for your dragoons and cannons. By stage 3, you should have a decent army, so you should use Shield Overcharge more frequently than Unbound Fanatics. UFs will still be good against Lings and Zealots, but with enough of your own Zealots, you can just Shield Overcharge and spin them to death. Use Unbound Fanatics again for later waves when you have to be in two places at once and when you need to stall. Miscellaneous questions. How do you choose which hybrid is more optimal for a certain commander like Artanis to face and why are they chosen? Does it have to do with the mutators, the enemy comp, etc? When you use mass goons, you can fight any hybrid. If there is mutually assured destruction, you should fight Terran or Zerg because the hybrid destroyers produce small explosions. In general, the hybrid aren't that important because you have solar for most of them. How do you deal with hybrids on temple? They're very often a problem, I noticed, especially with just die. As mentioned earlier, you mainly rely on top bar. Orbital Strike Hybrid Destroyers and Nemesis. You can also warp in some Immortals or Dragoons. You'll need Dragoons versus Air Hybrid anyway, so it's fine to make a few. For the second Double Hybrid Wave, if there's just die, don't expect to kill all of them. Get rid of as many as you can and then stall. Make sure you get rid of the Marines as they actually deal a lot of DPS if left unchecked. If there isn't just die, then you just storm your Archons and Zealots as always. How do you micro as Artanis on Temple of the Past, and how does it vary on what you do with each mutation? I generally focus more on macro, paying attention to my resources and spending them to assist my units that are in combat. As for the actual micro, I storm my zealots repeatedly. I'll storm 3 to 4 times, covering the entire wave, and then see what's left. Storm 1 to 2 more times if needed, especially if there are broodlings. With energy regen and new high templar, I usually have enough storms for the next fight. Before each fight, I try to put my Archons in the front and my High Templar and Dragoons in the back, especially before a drop pod falls. And you might see me moving around back and forth a lot during fights. I usually pull back when tanks siege so that they don't hit me. And I also pull back so the enemies can walk into my storm. And when I mass goons, usually with P3, I'll drag move the ones that are hurt to the back to keep them alive longer. Is it possible for Artanis to have time to clear lanes for any mutation combination? If so, how can he find time to get it done? Well, in general, you shouldn't do it because it's not necessary. You'll just lose units when you really need to keep as many as you can alive. For pattern B, you should clear the southwest lane because it'll be easier to clear or at least stall the extra thrasher. Use orbital strike to clear the second wave. This will only work against weak enemies. After the 6 minute hybrid wave spawns, use shield overcharge, then solar the hybrid and the buildings. So this is done before they meet up as they're walking towards the meeting point. Clear the remaining buildings and don't forget that the next wave spawns at 6.45.
For pattern A, you can clear the northwest lane after clearing the third thrasher so you can solar where they spawn. For pattern B, you can clear both side lanes during stage 2. Note that this isn't really possible when fights last long. Hopefully you have a unit on one of the side lanes to know where the 9 minute wave spawned before they actually start moving. After the thrasher, move towards the lane where the enemies will spawn or have spawned. Use Unbound Fanatics if you're P3 and Shield Overcharge if you're P1 and push all the way to the end. Solar the 10 minute wave as soon as they spawn and then head back in the other direction. Hopefully you have some buildings near the temple to stall just in case it takes a long time to get back. For P3, use Shield Overcharge if you need to when you engage the other hybrid wave. To clear the other lane, push forward and use Unbound Fanatics if you're P3. For P1, you won't have Shield Overcharge, so you probably have to give up clearing the other lane. You use Shield Overcharge at 9 minutes because your army is smaller and probably needs the extra HP. If you didn't use Shield Overcharge at 9 minutes, you can use it now and try to push all the way to the end, clearing the lane. What are some Thrasher stalling tactics? For distracting them from striking the temple, you can share that are specific to certain commanders. Siege an Observer near the Thrasher but away from Detectors. Warp in a Dragoon or two when no waves are coming. Micro them if you can to avoid getting shocked. The temple will take about 1600 damage from the double Thrashers. Stalling is best for the extra Thrasher in pattern B. Assuming you have cleared the Nexus, CC, or Hatchery, so there the enemy hasn't built anything on the path, you can actually go kill the Thrasher after dealing with the waves. Then let the double Thrashers attack the temple. The extra Thrasher will do about 550 damage before double Thrashers spawn. And that's it for this guide. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If you're an Artanis main, comment that below and tell us your experiences with this guide. And please share this guide with your fellow Artanis lovers. After you study this guide, why don't you try the Artanis test? You're gonna be needing this for Tempo of Rebirth. So yeah, see you next time.